Paul, we get a lot of questions from buyers and sellers alike about the mortgage pre-approval process. Uh, and I'm actually glad that you brought this this topic up today because I have several questions for you as well. Um, Paul, can you jump into that? Absolutely. So, Emilio, as you know, in this market in particular, because it's such a uh, competitive market, you know, inventory is a premium. I mean, let's talking about what, what's going on right now. When you do have, you know, a, a prospective client or someone putting an offer in, you know, pre-approvals are key because, you know, as you know, go to open house or showing. If you're not ready to pull the trigger from that moment on, pretty much, you know, you could be the house could be under contract within 24 to 48 hours. So you really mm -hmm. have to be ready. And when people say, are you pre-approved? That's a very common question. Now, have you been pre-approved? Well, yes, I've been pre-approved or pre-qualified or, you know, there's kind of that, that gray area, so to speak, that you deal with when you hear this. So when I say pre-approval, what I'm talking about is when I get a client or a referral, I make sure, number one, you know, we explain the process. You know, we talk about what it entails. You know, you go from the, you know, running credit, obviously, you know, verifying assets, down payment, going through the, um, you know, the income process, looking at W-2s, pay stubs, uh, tax returns, well, whatever it may be. So the process is a little bit more than just saying, oh, yeah, oh, I, I can qualify. And you know what? In the old days, maybe that was sufficient. But in this market, you really have to have, you know, all your ducks in a row in order to make this come to fruition. People say, well, what do I need to give you? Well, guess what? If you really want a true approval, you need to give me, number one, license, social security number. I have to run your credit. There's no way I can give you a pre-approval letter without running your credit. Um, you know, secondly would be, you know, bank statements to verify, okay, I'm putting down X and Y dollars. So I have bank statements. I can source the funds. You know, people that put cash, large deposits, that has to be, you know, kind of identified from day one. Where did that money come from? Because then in the end, you can't use it if it's not something we can source. And then thirdly would be income. You know, if you have a W-2 job, you're a salary employee, an hourly employee, okay, I can see your pay stubs, I can see your year to date makes sense. But if you're someone with commission or bonus or overtime, you really have to take all that into consideration because those things are not always guaranteed. And if you don't ask the questions and you don't do your search, you know, research ahead of time, it could actually um, make a client who looks really strong all of a sudden not qualify you know, not having a two-year history as, you know, self-employed. There, you know, so as you can see, all these things come together when we do a pre-approval. And once I go through all that and give you a letter, I actually run findings to make sure we get what's called an approve eligible. So we take this very seriously. It's not something where we just, you know, oh yeah, you're pre-approved. We, it's, it's, it's it is approval. It, it's a, it's an approval minus a property. Can you explain the difference between a pre-approval and a full-on approval for a mortgage? Sure, sure. So, uh, uh, you know, typical or, or industry common uh, pre-approval could be maybe they did run credit, collect a few documents. You know, they did their due diligence to a certain point, meaning, OK, credit score works. Uh, you know, the job history is relatively secure. You know, they do. I see some money in the bank, but I really didn't go through underwriting. I, I, I kind of put it in the system and it looked good in the surface. But, you know, when, when a true pre-approval or, or approval, I should say, true approval means you did more than just the basics. I mean, you also maybe got a verification of employment, what's called a VOE. So if a borrower has some situation where maybe their income is, you know, more seasonal or they have a situation where they have some commission bonus, we actually dig a little deeper. When I have a client like that, I actually go to their employer and get a verification of, you know, what they make, what their, you know, compensation package looks like. So that's one part is doing the, the background on their actual employment history, as well as what they make and what the company will verify. Because remember, mm -hmm. what you make and what the company verifies are two different things. And we go by what the company verifies. So that, that's Good. one of the things with, with the true approval. Um, secondly, we'll look at things that maybe you don't see on the surface. Credit score. Okay. You see their credit actual score. But when you look at their history, if they have any late mortgage payments in the past 12 months at any property they own, technically, if that comes up, they don't qualify for a conventional mortgage. Most people don't realize that till after the fact. Or God forbid they had a bankruptcy, um, you know, a short sale. There's certain waiting periods. So when we do a true approval, we factor all these things into the equation beyond just credit score. And, oh, they look pretty good, you know, down payment wise. And, oh, they have a job. So that's when a true approval really means something. We run the findings because if it comes back as what's called approve eligible, that means it's it's a it's a approved loan. Underwriter approved it. If it comes back as a refer or ineligible. That's when there's issues. And if you don't do the full, you know, your full due diligence, your full, you know, background, you won't find that out until after the fact. So you, in theory, could give a pre-approval letter and not go the next extra step. And now all of a sudden, and the surface looks good. But then when it goes to underwriting down the road, you have a property under contract. Guess what? It's not closing. And that's the worst conversation, the worst call to make in your life to someone who thinks they're already approved. Then all of a sudden, although it doesn't work out, calling the advisors, calling the sellers, it, it, it's not a good situation to be in.